Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old-school RuneScape video. Today, my revamped 1 to 99 smithing guide. With this skill, you will be interacting mainly with ore you get from smithing, as well as metal bars to turn them into different items for experience. It is by far one of the, if not the most outdated skill in old-school RuneScape, which has only received a few updates over the years. Smithing is absolutely essential for Ironmen since they need to make their own items through the skill. But for unrestricted accounts, you won't get much use out of it, and will instead be helpful for profit or simply a quick 99. If you enjoyed today's video, you would help me out tremendously by subscribing with notifications on, dropping a cheeky like, and consider becoming a channel member for instant access to our Discord and other cool benefits and rewards. These are all the quests that provide smithing experience as of the time of making this video. Remember that some of them have a smithing level requirement, and you may not be able to do them right away. Smithing is probably the best skill in terms of early game experience from questing, and we will be doing 5 of them to skip a ridiculous amount of levels. The great thing about it is that they can be done on a fresh account, and you won't need a lot of time investment for them. Experience aside, up next we have quests related to smithing that allow us access to more content to train with, some of which are actually crucial on our road to 99. The Giant Dwarf will let us access the Dwarven city of Keldegrim, and here is where you will find the Blast Furnace. By doing this activity, you will gain either tons of profit or tons of experience per hour, so an absolute must for the account. In order to be able to do the Blast Furnace efficiently, you will need a pair of Ice Gloves obtained during the Hero's Quest. And the Goldsmith Gauntlets can be obtained after the Family Crest Quest. They are not mandatory, but doing the Blast Furnace without them will be like drinking soup with a fork. In similar fashion, the recently released The Sleeping Giant's Quest will teach you how to use the newest smithing training method by the name The Giant's Foundry. It is a fun activity where you can recycle items and we will learn all about it in a little bit. Remember how we did the tourist trap for the 1 to 99 agility guide? Well, if you haven't done it, I recommend it to be able to smith dart tips, which is a decently profitable item to smith and will allow us to AFK for longer periods of time. And finally, the Dwarf Cannon quest will let you smith the steel bars into cannonballs, and as we will see in a little bit, it is the most AFK method for the smithing skill. So, if you're looking for things to do with low focus, this quest is mandatory. When it comes to useful items for the smithing skill, we will start with two that have already been mentioned, starting with the Ice Gloves. You will need them for both the Blast Furnace and the Giant's Foundry, and will let you skip dumping water on hot metal in order to interact with them. After the Family Crest quest, take your Steel Gauntlets to Oven in the Alcarid Mine to turn them into Goldsmith Gauntlets. When you smelt the gold ore into bars with them equipped, experience per item will jump from 22.5 to 56.2, almost to 2.5 times the original amount, which is a ridiculous increase. The ammo mold is obtained after the Dwarf Cannon quest, and it is needed to turn steel bars into 4 cannon walls for your cannon. I feel really bad for Ironmen who have to do this because this is one of the most painful activities in the game. The coal bag is obtained from the Motherload Mine, and it is a crucial item for one of the methods we will mention in a little bit. As the name suggests, it allows us to store coal inside to maximize our trips whenever doing something with the item. The Giant's Foundry offers a smithing outfit called the Smith's Uniform. By wearing all four pieces, you will smith items at anvils one tick faster, which means you will save 0.6 seconds per item you create. In the long run, it can actually save a little bit of time. Also from the Giant's Foundry, we have the Double Cannon Mold. As it's obvious, it will instead turn two steel bars into eight cannonballs per action, which will double the rate at which we will do this for more profit per hour, but less AFK time. The final item on this list is the Imkando Hammer. This is a wearable hammer obtained from the ruins of Kemdozel, for which you need the quest below Ice Mountain. I didn't include it in the recommended quest because this is more of a luxury item, and it's not going to make a huge difference. We go back to a skill where Idle Notifier is the main plugin to recommend for you to be notified when your character stops performing an action. It is especially useful when using an anvil or a regular furnace since you can AFK for quite a ton. There's another plugin named the Blast Furnace, which will provide you with visual aid when engaging in set activity. It doesn't really do much in terms of efficiency, but it's nice to see where you have to click and when for you to do this quicker. Alright, scapers, the best way to start our smithing journey is by doing quests related to the skill that give a ridiculous amount of experience for no requirements. The first one is a Knight's Sword. By spending no more than 20 minutes, you will have jumped from levels 1 to 29, which gives us a requirement for the next quests. You are then going to go to Al Karid and get started on the Sleeping Giant quests. Just like Guardians of the Rift, this one is pretty much the tutorial for the smithing minigame, which is a great way to train the skill and recycle supplies. You are then going to go to Seer's Village and do the Elemental Workshop 1, immediately followed by the sequel, Elemental Workshop 2. 
You will need a few crafting levels, which can also be obtained pretty quickly. And now you will be at a healthy level 38. The last quest is the Giant Dwarf. This will only take us to level 39, but after this adventure is done, Keldegorn will be opened which hosts the Blast Furnace, which we'll use for both the tons of profit and the tons of experience per hour. As I always say, none of these are 100% needed, but extremely nice to skip on some early game pain. The last thing I recommend for you to do is buy 96 steel bars and go to Farrakh West Bank with your trusty hammer. You are then going to make 32 steel war hammers for you to reach level 40, which is where we are going to start most of our training. Okay, and now for actually training the skill. At level 40 you are able to smith gold ore into gold bars, and if you have the ice gloves and the goldsmith gauntlets, the best training method is available to you right away. Go to the Blast Furnace and grab a full graceful outfit, some stamina potions, and both the pairs of gloves. If you are below level 60 smithing, you will need to pay 2,500 coins for every 10 minutes by talking to the operator near the bank. At level 60 and above, you will simply need to store coins in the pouch next to the bank chest, which will deplete as you are inside even if you are not using the furnace. So after equipping all your gear and paying the operator by either talking to him or depositing cash in the pouch, sip a dose of stamina potion and grab a full inventory of gold ore. Click on the conveyor belt west of the furnace and make sure you have your goldsmith gauntlet equipped. As soon as you see the XP drop on the screen, quickly equip your ice gloves, click on the dispenser south of the furnace, and press space bar to take all your gold bars with you. Once that's done, go to the bank, deposit your gold bars, and grab more gold ore, and do this until your target level. In the clips you can't see me swapping to the goldsmith gauntlets because the max cape has a perk of the smithing cape, which acts as if you have the goldsmith gauntlet equipped. If you don't have the ice gloves, you will need to use a bucket of water on the dispenser, or just wait until the bars cool down for you to grab them, which can actually take a few seconds. This method costs upwards of about 800,000 GP per hour, but provides an astonishing 360k XP per hour. This is what I did from about level 60 to 99, and I highly recommend it since it's not super expensive, even if you do it all the way to 99. For our next method, we will stay at the Blast Furnace, because we can start using it right away to make tons of cash. Instead of gold bars, we will be turning ore into either iron, steel, mithril, adamant, or rune bars according to your level. This will always be profitable, because the Blast Furnace has a particular feature. When using it to make bars, you will only need half the coal for you normally need when using a regular furnace. This means one coal for steel, two for mithril, three for adamant, and four for rune. In order to achieve the numbers you see on screen, you will kinda need the trusty coal bag. I would personally not even do this if I don't have it, but experience and GP per hour are so attractive that you will want to grab it as soon as possible before coming here. Even if this method is mostly for profit, experience is surprisingly high if we compare it to other skills. If you want a cheaper experience, you may instead do gold bars or profitable metal bars from 40 or 60 all the way up to level 88, where you will switch to adamant plate bodies instead. They are some of the most cost-effective items at this point, and it's also pretty good experience per hour, since you will be banking quite often, because each item requires 5 bars. This can cost anywhere between 20 to 50 kgp per hour if you sell the plate bodies back to the Grand Exchange. And if done efficiently, it can land you between 200 and 230k XP per hour, depending on how focused you are. I recommend you focus for this method because there's another one involving an anvil, and will let us AFK for slightly longer. The final method on the quote-unquote viable ones is a lot more AFK, as we will be turning metal bars into dart tips. Of course, after completion of the Taurus Trap quest. This is great because darts may be created out of a single metal bar, meaning you will have a full 27 items, or 28 if you have the Encanto Hammer, for you to chill and not even pay attention. Interestingly enough, every dart tip is profitable except for rune dart tips, which are the only ones I recommend skipping. But keep in mind that experience per hour is not going to be spectacular. From about 10,000 XP per hour from bronze darts, all the way up to 55k per hour from adamant darts, which you can make at level 4 and 74 respectively, of course with iron, steel, and mithril in between. These will almost always be profitable because people use them for speedrunning the fletching skill. Ladies and gentlemen, we now jump into the alternative methods, and smithing is so simple that I will only have three for you in this category. We are going to start with a banger, and it is the Giant's Foundry, the newest way to train the skill. This will be the only time where I will tell you to go watch another one of my videos, because the Giant's Foundry is its own 14 minute guide, and I want to give you as much information as possible. Otherwise, I would skip a lot of information here just to make it too long, and I kinda don't wanna do that. This update was mainly for Ironmen looking to recycle their metal items, and it's also somewhat useful for mains until you have all the rewards. 
For the runecrafting guide, for example, I actually gave you a quick rundown of Guardians of the Rift because it's not too complex. The Giant's Foundry, however, is a little bit more specific. So, for a more engaging and click-intensive method that offers budget training, check out my detailed guide in the description, and I'm sure you will enjoy it. The next alternative method is on the opposite end of click-intensive, and it's just smithing cannonballs for the most AFK activity of pretty much any skill that comes to mind, not counting the Nightmare Zone. As we said before, making cannonballs with your normal mold will have an inventory of steel bars ready in about 3 minutes. Because of things like bots or even other bosses that drop cannonballs like the Corporeal Beast, the Venonatus, and even the Phantom Muspa, this is not as profitable as it once was, but you will still walk away with a little bit of profit every time you do this. The downside is that, just like I said before, it is so slow that not many methods come close to how little experience per hour you'll be getting. Regardless, a great activity to do if you are busy with something else. An extra method we can include here is turning three rune bars into items such as rune plate legs, rune plate skirts, and the two-handed swords which all provide between 180 and 200k experience per hour. And profit will depend on what item you focus on. Now, some viewers might notice that you need level 99 to create all of these, but if you have a stack of Dwarven Stout in the bank, by praying Preserve you can keep the boost for a little longer, and to make a few of these for the duration of the boost for you to drink another one when it wears off. You will make more money than when smithing adamant plate bodies, but it's going to be slightly more annoying having to boost every 90 seconds or so. Regardless, an interesting way to get your last few levels and make a humble amount of money in the process. An extra method I won't even go into detail, but just showing you because of how ridiculous it is, we have making enhanced crystal keys with crystal shards at Prifinus. You may have heard of a YouTuber by the name of Penguin OZ or Moist Critical, who actually got level 99 in the absolute fastest way possible by spending a few billion GP on it. Each key provides with 500 experience in both smithing and crafting, and you can turn a full inventory of them in this singing bowl. I do not recommend anyone ever do this, but a pretty cool way to say the least. And now boys and girls, time to show you a few ways to get to level 99 by either making or spending a good amount of money. As I always say, these are just a couple of options, but feel free to mix and match any of the methods we have seen before. Remember all of them will start at level 40 because of questing and the steel warhammers. The first one is what I personally did on my way to 99, and that is to make the best dart tip possible from 40 to 60. And then we will swap the gold bars from 60 all the way to 99. It's honestly not as expensive as I imagined, especially because gold ore keeps getting cheaper and cheaper because of all the supplies from PVM drops. For the next one we will be making tons of money. So stick to the blast furnace by melting bars with your trusty coal bag, and even the experience per hour is not going to be the best, once you reach level 99 you'll have so much money to train other skills, you won't even care about it. You may also stop at level 88 to make adamant plate bodies for cheap experience and less clicks. To fully AFK the skills, simply focus on dart tips from 40 all the way to 99. But remember not to work on rune darts, since they will make you lose tons of cash. Instead, you can start smelting gold bars at a regular furnace, and with your goldsmith gauntlets equipped you will still get the experience boost, but will allow you to AFK for much longer. Of course, if you're a masochist, you can work on cannonballs from 40 all the way to 99, but this is going to take many, many months of your life. Iron Man and Iron Women watching this video, whenever you get metal drops, save all of them for the Giant's Foundry, and recycle as many materials as possible to maximize your smithing gains. If you're not making ammo from bars, you can also make things like plate bodies at an anvil, and then throw them in the cauldron to get even more experience out of your materials. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much for the smithing guide, thank you so much for coming and for making it this far. If you did, make sure to tell me how you would get level 99 smithing, or if you already have it. A massive, massive thank you to all my channel members, you boys and girls are absolutely insane, and your support goes a long way. If you want to be part of this list of legends, click the join button below to subscribe monetarily and receive a ton of benefits in the videos, in the live streams, and of course in the Discord. Stay tuned for the next video, and of course for the next 1 to 99 guide, where I will show you how to achieve mastery in the prayer skill. Have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, peace.